Good morning. I'd like to thank the CED for the opportunity to share the G1 story with you. I'll tell you a little bit about who we are, um, the market opportunity, our R&D pipeline, and our recently closed Series B financing, and some upcoming milestones to look out for. So we're a clinical stage oncology company developing a potential best-in-class CDK4-6 inhibitor called G1T28. And this compound addresses two very broad markets in oncology, each of which exceeds $10 billion. We have engaged founders, principally Ned Sharpless, who's head of the UNC Cancer Center in Chapel Hill, the Leinberger Cancer Center, as well as Kwok Kin Wong, the scientific director at the Belfer Institute. We've been very capital efficient in drug discovery and development. The company was first seeded by Hatteras Venture Partners back in 2012, and with less than $10 million, took a compound from bench to bedside. And that's because we have an incredible team of dedicated scientists and uh, a management team that's done this before. Uh, collectively, between the four of us, uh, over 80 years of experience discovering and developing drugs to treat patients with cancer. So this opportunity, these two markets uh, that I told you about, we believe that G1T28 has both best-in-class and first-in-class potential. Best-in-class as an oral antineoplastic agent to treat patients whose tumors are driven by this pair of enzymes, CDK4-6. This is now a validated approach. Uh, Pfizer's drug, palbociclib, which is a CDK4-6 inhibitor, was just approved a few weeks ago. And the analyst projections just in ER-positive breast cancer alone exceed $10 billion. However, not all tumors are driven by CDK4-6. And we have a first-in-class approach to protect the bone marrow of those patients who are treated with myelosuppressive chemotherapy uh, for tumors that are CDK4-6 independent. The current treatment paradigm involves salvage or uh, supportive care with growth factors like EPO and GCSF, and those in aggregate in oncology also do $10 billion. And we have the opportunity to displace those. So very quickly, the science. Uh, now you know, uh, seeing this slide, where our logo comes from and where our name comes from. Uh, over 20 years of research, understanding that these enzymes, these cyclin-dependent kinases, drive the orderly progression of a cell through the cell cycle and cause, in many cases, tumor cells to aberrantly proliferate. And if you can arrest cells at G1, you can stop tumor cell proliferation. Again, now a validated approach with palbociclib's approval. What's unique to G1 is this opportunity to arrest the cells in the bone marrow, which give rise uh, to all of the elements of the blood, and protect them from the damaging effects of chemotherapy. And we can do this in patients whose tumors are not dependent on CDK4-6. So our pipeline, uh, all the compounds uh, shown here were designed and synthesized by G1. We wholly own the IP. Uh, six issued patents and multiple pending applications. Uh, the IV drug, G1T28, has just uh, completed its uh, phase one uh, trial. I'll, I'll uh, talk about that in a bit. Uh, the oral drug just starting, and we have some backup and follow-on compounds. In the last couple minutes, just want to um, uh, drill down a bit on this whole chemo protection um, story that is uh, novel. Um, we're first in class, and we think this can be uh, quite disruptive given how currently patients are treated uh, with myelosuppressive chemotherapy. So inside the bone marrow, you have these stem and progenitor cells, hematopoietic stem cells, that give rise to all of the elements of the blood that you see here. Chemotherapy typically wipes out these cells. And you have to come in later with growth factors like erythropoietin and GCSF to try and replenish red cells, white cells. There's nothing for platelets other than transfusions. Our approach is transiently arrest the proliferation of these cells, which protects them from the damaging effects of chemotherapy. And then all of these blood cell populations come back much more quickly. We now have an opportunity to test this in cancer patients. We have human bone marrow data that, that very rigorously demonstrates that we can do this. 
And we'll be able to show data, this is a, a, a mouse experiment, but we, we are now in a position to show data in patients uh, that demonstrate exactly this, which is these are mice treated with myelosuppressive doses of 5-FU. Uh, in the blue bars, you can see that their blood cell counts, whether they're white cells, red cells, or platelets, uh, are all diminished. Animals that are treated with our drug, G1T28, just prior to that myelosuppressive chemo, um, those cell counts uh, are in the normal range. So in conclusion, uh, we just raised a large financing, $33 million, led by Eshelman Ventures, Fred Eshelman, uh, and RA Capital Management, another prominent crossover fund, Tavistock, Lumira Capital, great participation from our existing investors, uh, Hatteras uh, and Metamune. Uh, this will fund operations for the next two years. We'll be presenting some exciting data, both at AACR and ASCO, uh, initiating these uh, clinical trials, uh, both with the IV and oral drug, and reporting out on data in uh, 17. Thank you.